All right, buckle up everybody, because today we're going deep, really deep into something pretty cool. It's called homotopy theory. Ooh, I like where this is going. I know, right? It's like we're stepping into this like mathematical fun house, right? Yeah. But this fun house, it's full of shapes that morph and concepts that'll really make you think. Absolutely. And you're in luck because you've got, well, an expert guide right here, ready to break it all down. I'll do my best. So think of this deep dive as a mission, okay? Right. Our mission is to figure out like, what in the world is homotopy theory? Okay. Why do we even need it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like, how does it actually work? We're gonna look at how it's used. And um, for those who are brave enough, we'll even peek into some of the like, more advanced crazy stuff. Okay, sounds like a plan. Sounds good. All right, so, you know, imagine we're about to unlock a secret door in math, a hidden dimension. The dimension where shapes, they're not so rigid, they're fluid. Right, exactly. It's like we're, we're going to see connections appear as these shapes transform. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Okay, good. I'm glad we're on the same page here. So, let's start simple. Okay. 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 What exactly is homotopy theory? Because I've heard it involves, like, deforming shapes, which sounds kind of cool. It is cool. But I don't really get what that means, you know, mathematically. Help me out here. Okay, so imagine you've got this lump of clay. Okay. You can mold it, stretch it, you can twist it, turn it into all sorts of crazy shapes. Gotcha. But there's one rule. No tearing it apart and no gluing pieces together. Okay, so you can't like fundamentally change what you're working with. Exactly. And that's what homotopy theory is all about. It's like studying these smooth transformations, you know, like how one shape can morph into another without any any drastic cuts or pastes. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. So it's like yeah. we're playing with mathematical Play-Doh. Exactly. That's a perfect analogy. Seeing like how far we can stretch and bend these shapes without like breaking the rules of the game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's really neat. Okay, so, you know, the classic example, and I know you've heard this before, but I got to hear it again. It's the coffee cup transforming into a donut. Yeah, the classic. Right. They seem totally different. Yeah. But in the world of homotopy theory, they're like best friends. <laughs> they're basically twins. Yeah. They're equivalent because you can, in theory, smoothly morph one into the other. Exactly. And that's what makes it so mind-blowing. Wait, so you're telling me that my morning coffee and my afternoon donut are like mathematical cousins they are my mind is already starting to bend a little bit and it gets even wilder okay hit me these shapes we're talking about they're not just physical objects right, okay. they can be like abstract ideas math concepts equations you know spaces with with weird properties or even even data sets so we're not talking about like literal play-doh donuts anymore we're going deeper much deeper we call them spaces but they can get pretty abstract, way more than, you know, the space we move around in every day. Okay, so we're talking about a whole universe of abstract shapes and structures. Yeah, think big. I like it. <laughs> but I have to ask, like, W-H-Y, why go through all this? Why do mathematicians, why do they care about, you know, deforming these abstract shapes? What's the point? What are we trying to figure out? That's the million-dollar question, and the answer, well, it's all about perspective. Okay, how so? Sometimes comparing things directly, it's just too rigid, you know? I see, yeah. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Right, it just doesn't work. It's a mismatch. Mm. But homotopy theory, it gives us this, this way to see past those rigid shapes, to find those, those connections that are hidden from view. So it's like we're putting on special mathematical glasses. Yes. And suddenly we can see shapes in this whole new light, revealing these secret relationships and patterns. You got it. By allowing these shapes to deform, to change, we can see what they're really made of, what connects them. It's like we're giving them the freedom to dance, to show us their true nature. Okay, I'm really starting to see the beauty in this. It's not just about the shapes themselves. It's about, like, understanding their potential, their relationships, their, their essence. Exactly. It's about going deeper. I love it. But how does it actually work? Like, what are the tools mathematicians use to study these crazy transformations? So there are a few key ideas that form, like the foundation of homotopy theory. One, we've already touched on it, homotopy equivalence. Right, the coffee cup and the donut. Exactly. It means if two shapes can smoothly morph into each other, they're, well, they're essentially equivalent. They're in the same family. So a coffee cup and a donut belong to the same shape-shifting family. You got it. Okay, I like that. But what about shapes that can't be morphed into each other? 
the rebels. Ah, uh, the rebels. Well, that's where Hamorta P groups come in. Okay, tell me more. These groups, they capture the different ways a space can be looped. You know, like imagine taking a string and wrapping it around the shape. Okay, I'm visualizing it. Homotopy groups help us understand all the possible ways to do that, revealing the the hidden structure of that space through its its loopiness. So it's like we're taking this string and we're we're like exploring all the nooks and crannies of a shape. Exactly. We're trying to figure out how many ways we can wrap it around. That sounds that sounds pretty insightful for something as simple as as looping a string. It might seem simple, but it tells us a lot about the shape's topology, its yeah. fundamental properties. So we've got homotopy equivalents to classify shapes based on their morphing abilities. Right. And then we've got homotopy groups to like delve into their their deeper structure, their secret looping codes. You got it. It's like we're building this toolkit to understand the language of shapes. I love it. It's all starting to click now. So tell me, what happens when we apply this toolkit? What sure. can we learn? Oh, we can learn a lot. For example, take a circle, right? Your basic circle. Okay. And compare it to a torus, which is like a donut. Donuts, I'm listening. Now a circle, it only has one fundamental group meaning there's really only one way to loop a string around it. All right, that makes sense. But a torus, it has two. You can loop a string through the hole in the middle. Oh, right, of course. Or you can wrap it around the outside. So a torus is like a double loop champion. I'm starting to see how these homotopy groups can reveal like hidden complexities within shapes. Exactly, and these complexities, they're not just you know mathematical curiosities, they have real world implications. Okay, hold on, we're going from donuts to real world implications. Oh yeah, homotopy theory isn't just some some theoretical game. It pops up in all sorts of fields like, like topology, where we classify uh -huh. abstract spaces, or in algebraic geometry, where we're dealing with complex equations. Wait, so these deformable shapes, they can actually help us solve equations? Oh, absolutely. This is blowing my mind. I love these deep dives. We start with like simple shapes, and suddenly we're talking about like the secrets of the universe. It's like we're yeah. peeling back layers of reality and seeing this this mathematical framework beneath it all. And that's just the beginning. Trust me, as we go deeper into homotopy theory, we'll find even more amazing concepts, more applications, more mind-blowing stuff. It's a wild ride. All right, I'm ready for more. Yeah, it's it's really something how these ideas they seem so abstract but they end up having like real world consequences. Right, like we're cracking this secret code. <laughs> exactly, a code that unlocks these these patterns in the universe. So tell me more about how this secret code is actually used, because you mentioned like topology and algebraic geometry. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little peek into how homotopy theory is actually making a difference in these areas? Okay, so topology first, it's often called like rubber sheet geometry. Rubber sheet geometry. Okay, I kind of like that. Yeah, it's a fun way to think about it. Basically, in topology, we care about the properties of shapes that don't change, even when we stretch them, twist them, bend them. Okay, so it's like we're trying to find the, the essence of a shape. Right, the stuff that makes it, it, regardless of its form. I like it. And homotopy theory, it gives us these really powerful tools for, for classifying, for telling different topological spaces apart based on their, their homotype. Homotopotype, so that's like how they can transform into each other. Exactly. It's like we're grouping shapes together based on their, their shape-shifting abilities. That's cool, a shape-shifting family tree. Right, and it helps us understand like the fundamental building blocks of these spaces, how they all fit together. All right, so give me an example. Okay, so let's say you've got a sphere, you know, like a ball. Okay. And then you've got a cube, like a dice. Gotcha. Now, they look pretty different. Yeah, totally different. But they're actually considered homotopy equivalent. Yeah, because yeah. you can smoothly deform one into the other. Okay, I'm going to need to see a demonstration of that, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it's a little hard to visualize, but trust me, it works. Okay, but what about shapes that, like, can't be transformed into each other so easily? Ah, yeah, those tricky ones. Well, that's where our trusty homotopy groups come back into play. Remember oh, those? Oh, my loops. Exactly. They let us, like, dive deeper into the structure of these spaces by looking at all the different ways we can wrap a string around them. Okay, I'm following. Remember how we talked about the torus, the donut? Yeah, my favorite. It has two fundamental groups because, well, you can loop the string through the hole or you can wrap it around the outside. And those different looping possibilities, they tell us something unique about the torus, about its topology. It's amazing, right? Yeah. S something as simple as a string loop can reveal so much about a shape. 
It's pretty neat. And it doesn't stop there. We can take these ideas and apply them to something called algebraic geometry, which deals with, well, it's all about geometric objects that are defined by equations. Hold on, we're going from Plato shapes to equations now. How does that even work? Okay, so think of it this way. An equation, it can describe a curve, a surface, or even something in like higher dimensions. Okay, I'm trying to picture it. Homotopy theory lets us analyze the shape of those objects, even if we can't actually see them. So we're using these ideas of deformation and looping to explore the geometry hidden within equations. Yes. It's like we're translating algebra into a language of shapes. I like it. I like it. And what does that tell us? Oh, it's led to some, some big breakthroughs in solving really tough equations. For example, problems about finding the roots of polynomials, which are, you know, they're kind of big deal in algebra. Okay, yeah, I vaguely remember those from, from school. So we're seeing these connections between geometry, topology, and algebra. They're all linked. Exactly. And homotopy theory, it's the bridge that connects them. I love how this is all coming together. But I have to ask, you know, can we take this shape-shifting perspective even further? Like, does it have applications outside of pure math? Absolutely. It's popping up everywhere in physics, computer science, even robotics. It's, it's a real interdisciplinary rock star. Okay, now that's what I'm talking about. You have me at physics, though. Give me an example. How is it being used to understand the universe? All right, so let's talk about string theory. Oh, yeah, the big one. String theory says that, you know, everything in the universe, it's not made of point-like particles, but these tiny vibrating strings. Okay, I've heard that before, but it still bends my brain a little. Yeah, it's pretty wild. But the way these strings, they move, they interact, well, that can be described using homotopy theory. Wait, so we're not just deforming shapes anymore. We're talking about, like, the fundamental fabric of reality? Yeah, that's the idea. This is incredible. And it's just one example, right? Yeah. Right. Homotopy theory is also showing up in quantum field theory, cosmology, all sorts of areas where physicists are trying to answer those, those big fundamental questions about the universe. This is why I love these deep dives. We start with simple shapes, and suddenly we're talking about the, the very nature of reality. It's been an amazing journey so far. Oh, we're not done yet. There's a whole world of advanced concepts within homotopy theory, stuff that takes these ideas even further. Okay, my brain's ready for another stretch. Yeah. What's next? What? What's beyond homotopy equivalents and homotopy groups? What are the, like, the pro-level tools that mathematicians use to go even deeper? So we're going deeper down the rabbit hole now. The concepts get a bit, well, they might sound a bit intimidating, but trust me, they're really just like building on what we've already learned. <laughs> okay, I'm game. It's like we've learned the basic steps and now we're ready for like the, the crazy dance routine. Exactly. So remember those model categories and stable homotopy theory I mentioned earlier? Uh, yeah, those sounded pretty hardcore. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a bit more advanced. But think of model categories like a way to to organize all these different types of homotopy theories. Okay, so it's like like a filing system. Yeah, kind of. It's like we're creating a, a standardized system, you know. A universal language for shape shifting. Exactly. And it means that like mathematicians can prove these these general theorems, these big ideas that apply across different homotopy theories. So it's like we're finding connections, seeing the bigger picture. Right, exactly. So instead of having a bunch of separate rules for each type of homotopi, we've got this this overarching framework that ties it all together. Okay, that makes sense. Efficiency is key. Right. And then there's stable homotopy theory. Okay, what makes it so stable? Well, it focuses on a special kind of homotopy equivalence, one that doesn't change, that stays stable even when we do certain things to the spaces. Okay, like what kind of things? One example is something called suspension. Suspension. Yeah, it's it's kind of like adding another dimension to a shape. So we're like stretching a shape into higher dimensions. Exactly. And then we're seeing what properties stay the same. You got it. And by focusing on those those stable properties, mathematicians can uncover these, these really deep patterns, these relationships that might not be obvious otherwise. So it's like we're finding the, the core essence of homotopy. Exactly. It's the stuff that holds true no matter how much we push the boundaries. I love it. Mm. But can you give me a real world example? How do these like pro-level concepts actually get used? Okay. Okay, so there's this field called motivic homotopy theory. Motivic homotopy theory, okay. It basically combines homotopy theory with algebraic geometry. So we're back to equations. We are. It's like we're using shape shifting to understand like the solutions to really complex equations. All right, break it down for me. 
Imagine you've got an equation that describes, say, a curve. Okay. Or a surface, or even something in like five dimensions, who knows? Right, things I can't even picture. Exactly. Motivic homotopy theory lets us study the shape of that thing even if we can't see it. We analyze its homotopy type. So we're using deformation and looping to explore the, the geometry hidden inside the equation. Exactly. It's like translating algebra into, into the language of shapes again. Exactly. And this allows us to understand those equations and their solutions in a whole new way. Man, this is incredible. We started with deforming shapes. Now we're talking about the fabric of reality, and now we're back to equations, but on a whole other level. This whole deep dive has been amazing. I know, right? It's a trip. And homotopy theory, it's a field that's always evolving. There are new discoveries, new applications popping up all the time. So it's like it's a living, breathing area of math. It's not just stuck in some textbook. Oh, absolutely not. It's, it's a testament to how powerful abstract thinking can be. I'm with you on that. This whole exploration, it's really opened my eyes to the the beauty of math, how versatile it is, how it can connect these seemingly unrelated ideas. Right. Like, we saw how homotopy theory can reveal those hidden connections, those relationships that we wouldn't see otherwise. We went from topology to algebra to physics, even touched on robotics. Yeah. I mean, this stuff is everywhere. And we even dipped our toes into the advanced stuff, those model categories and the stable stuff. Yeah, the, the pro-level homotopy theory. Exactly. And, you know, I hope... I really hope that our listeners, they've gained a new appreciation for this whole field. It's its pretty amazing. Oh, absolutely. It's a reminder that, like, even the most abstract ideas, they can have these, these huge implications for how we understand the world. Couldn't have said it better myself. And who knows? Maybe one of our listeners out there will be inspired to to dive even deeper, to make their own discoveries. I hope so. There's so much more to explore in the world of homotopy theory. It's full of possibilities. Well, to our listeners, keep exploring. Keep asking those big questions. Keep pushing those boundaries. The universe of knowledge, it's vast, it's all connected, and homotopy theory, well, it gives us a pretty amazing lens to view it all through. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. So that concludes our deep dive into homotopy theory. I hope you all enjoyed the ride. Me too. Until next time, keep those brains stretching, and we'll catch you on the next deep dive.